Good morning, uh, Honorable Minister, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here to uh, attend this uh, wonderful summit, uh, wonderful conference in this very beautiful city. Uh, today, my topic uh, is about the future technology, this uh, 5G and the 4.5G. And uh, this is the first time we share the whole picture of 5G and the 4.5G in the regulatory conference. And uh, we, 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 know we, we allow you to use 2G, 3G, 4G, but the technical change faster. Uh, I still remember uh, eight years ago when my uh, daughter uh, was born, I had to buy a lot of toys for her. They used to the everywhere for toys. But uh, uh, four years ago, when my, certain, when my certain daughter was born, she didn't like any other toys but uh, one toy, that is iPad. Yeah. She played iPad better than me, so same change. So I think maybe two or three years later, uh, my daughter, uh, she won't like iPad anymore. Uh, but uh, virtual, virtual, virtual reality, Google Glass. So I think the children, yeah, children move faster. They move faster than us. So we should uh, speed up our step to catch up with the, catch up with the technical innovation in the fast change area. So let's begin. First, uh, uh, 5G. Now the 5G is a very hot topic. Today I will share my point of view of uh, 5G uh, in three, uh, three different aspects. That is, why do we need 5G? Why do we need 5G? And uh, what 5G is and how to get 5G. First, why do we need 5G? Yes, the, uh, the answer may vary depending on your perspectives. Uh, in my view, 5G will help us to overcome some of the challenges which cannot be fully addressed by the existing mobile technologies, uh, particularly in terms of number of collections, network latency, and speed. The first thing, number of collections. Although 4G has already reached the, the uh, thousands of collections per sale, it is still uh, not enough to make the future demands of Internet of Things in, in the fully connected world. And 5G, with 5G, the connections will reach 1 million per square kilometers. So this is exponential growth. And with this capability, 5G can provide 100 billion smart load. Uh, so this will make everything we get everything in your life connected from our, from our car, from our TV, our glasses, our watches, our toothbrushes, roll shoes, even to, uh, to local armies, everything that goes on and on, make everything connected. So I think this uh, capability is also extremely valuable for some industry applications. Of second, the latency. Although the, the latency of 4G is less than 50 milliseconds, which is just half of uh, that of 3G. But uh, still, some applications uh, like self driving, yes, like self driving is still need much lower latency than 4G can provide. For example, our 4G network, our self driving car, traveling at 100 km per hour, will continue to move 1.4 meters from, from detecting our failure to apply the brakes 1.4 meters. This, as this could be the, the, the difference between life and this. So, but on a 5G network, the same car will just move 1.8 centimeters. So this is uh, uh, comparable with the standard of ABS. So since 5G has the capability to, to provide one millisecond latency, so this this will make the response speed of 5G network 50 times, 50 times faster than, than, than 4G. Third speed, the uh, consumer, like you and me, always want a faster speed. Although 4G is 10 times faster than 3G, it is still behind the marketing demands of video uh, once 4K becomes standard. So 5G can provide the 10 GPS peak throughput, which is almost 66 times faster than 4G. So this means 
the time time required to download an HBAT HD movie will re, uh, re, uh, reduce from 70 minutes with 3G to 7 minutes uh, with 4G to just 6 seconds with 5G. So that's amazing. That's, that's why do we need 5G. Next, I'll discuss uh, what 5G is. What is 5G? Huawei began this research of 5G uh, about six years ago when we launched the industry first 4G network in Norway. We uh, started the research of, of 5G. Also now the standard of 5G uh, have not been fully defined yet. Uh, we believe that 5G will differentiate itself from any other mobile technologies in the three aspects we just discussed. That is 100 billion collections, 1 millisecond user long latency, and 10 GPS user fast speed. And at the same time, we think 5G is not only an upgrade of technologies with this capability, 5G will become a powerful platform to enable the new applications and new business model and even new industries. And with this capability, 5G will become a key enabler for the future, for many future disruptions. And then next slide, I'd like to show you a video, uh, 5G video, what 5G is, then we discuss how to get 5G. Okay, let's look at the video. since the speed of the video is not good because it's not 5G. Yeah. <laughs> so that is 5G. That is we are working for in the next several years. So next, uh, I'd like to uh, discuss how can we get 5G. There are three most important things we should do. That is open collaboration across industry and heavy investment in technical innovation and evolutionary commercialization strategy. First, open collaboration across the industry. In the past, the telecom industry had its most of the technical innovation and the standard uh, development on the telecommunication, telecommunication network. Uh, and the other, uh, other industry have limited opportunity to participate in the process. So when the telecommunication network failed to meet the demands of vertical industry, this industry establish their own standards and roll out their private uh, network. This will result in the, the fragmented and the inconstant standard of communications. So we hope in the future, the telecom uh, industry can open up and cooperate with all the other industries. And the telecommunication network can be the foundation of all the other industries. And in this way, we can fully understand the requirements of other industries all the other virtual industries and they make all the industries push the telecom industry forward and they eventually make 5G. Make 5G as a key enabler for the future industrial revolution. 
Okay. And certainly, heavy investment uh, for technical innovation. Huawei started uh, the Sichuan 5G about six, six years ago. Now we have LAN 5G uh, research center worldwide, and many of them based in Europe. For example, in, in Sweden, they uh, focus on the uh, architecture. In Paris, focus on the standardization. And uh, in Germany, fo fo focus on the verticals. And also in, in Hali, Milan, focus on the mobile backhaul for 5G. And totally, uh, we have over 500 uh, 5G experts, and we will continue to increase the investment on 5G. And at the same time, we widely cooperate with uh, industry partners. For example, now Huawei is a board member of METIS and the 5GTP, and also we are the key founder of 5GIC and the 5G uh, which is uh, which are the uh, most important 5G organization uh, in Europe. And also, we widely cooperate with the uh, leading university and the institution to push the whole 5G industry forward. And I think 5G will come to us with numerous new technologies. I just mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, a few of them. That is uh, new air interface of 5G, and the new architecture, and the all spatial access. I will discuss one by one. First, uh, the new air interface. This uh, technology will include the spectral efficiency at least three times uh, from, from 4G. And how we already, already developed our new air interface with the key technologies, SMA and the uh, FOM DMA and the protocoding and the muscle memory and so on with this technology. We found that the new air interface can not only just improve the spectral efficiency, but also it allowed for the more connections than the lower latency. And the new architecture, virtualized architecture, this key technology will create an open and software-defined architecture. And this architecture will support thousands of applications on just one single physical network. In 5G network, there are special words for defining this architecture. It's called network switching. And this architecture will make it possible for 5G network to support it. All the, uh, all the uh, requirements of vertical industry and they make 5G area as the, the new infrastructure in the future digital world. And third, the all spectral access, this means all the spectrum, no matter 2G, 3G, 4G, and the FDD, TDD will all migrate to, uh, to 5G. And then this means in 5G area, the operator can deploy a single wireless access network with unified various uh, technologies, this will significantly improve the network, uh, the, the user experience and the learning the TCO. And the spectrum below 6 GHz is the primary spectrum for, for 5G, and the above uh, 6 GHz is the future complementary spectrum for capacity. And the next, uh, we'll talk about how to evolve from current 4G to future 5G. 5G will come to us uh, er, uh, about 2020. Uh, this, is, this year is 2050. There is a five-year gap. What will happen in the next five years? What will bring us to 5G from 4G? We think it is 4.5G, which will pass the road to 5G. We, uh, we leverage the key technology of 5, uh, 5G to the current 4G to provide the 4.5G solution. So 4.5G will significantly improve the network capability and uh, maximize the ROI of, 5, of 4G because 4.5G is a smooth evolution uh, solution of 4G, for 4G. And the reason that stimulates the demand of 5G, of, of 5G and the uh, extend the help operator and the inter industry uh, partner to extend their marketing leadership from 4G to 5G. And the uh, 4.5G will include the content of 3GPP release 12, and the release 13, 14, and 15, and they will come to commercials next year. So, what is 4.5G? Now, 4.5G can provide 1 GPPS peak throughput, which is 3 times faster than 4G. And also, 100,000 connections, which is 100 
times uh, one that of 40, and also provides the lower latency with 10 milliseconds, which is one fifth of 40. And 4.5G will also include a lot of new technologies. For example, we use massive memory and 3D performing, and also uh, massive CA to provide the, the faster speed, the peak throughput. And also use LTN, LTN and LTD to provide massive flashy and also new architecture. For example, cloud EPC to provide the low latency. So I, I'd like to show you another video, yeah, another video of 4.5G. Uh, because with this new technology, 4.5G will support some new applications which cannot be supported by the existing 4G network. So let's show what 4.5G will bring to us. Today we can see that LT networks have been deployed all over the world. Now telecommunication is transforming the way we live and work, as well as the entire industry as a whole. LT Network has thus far provided us with an incredible HD and Ultra HD view experience. In the next five years, what amazing technologies will emerge? Virtual reality is expected to offer an immersive HD experience. The capability of VR to transform worlds is now limited to gaming. But it will also open new business opportunities and will undoubtedly change the way we will live. In the next five years, Internet of Things will be realized through billions of connections. Everything from cars, light bulbs, utility meters, parking spaces, to rubbish bins, and wearable devices will be connected. The Internet of Things, linked by cellular mobile networks, will usher in a better connected world. Industry 4.0 will be deployed all over the world in the next five years. Mobility will facilitate Industry 4.0 and elevate factories to a new form of intelligence. Cyber-physical systems will communicate and cooperate with humans using real-time connectivity. Mobile networks will evolve to support real-time service and become the key component of Industry 4.0. For a better connected world, What's the next? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's amazing. That's uh, unfortunately we uh, don't need that uh, with for 5G. The 4.5G can support this application for us. So uh, 4.5G will come to commercial next year. Uh, now we are discussing with some leading operator about the trial of 4.5G this year. And the uh, whole industry, including the operator and the vendor, and also the chipset and the US company, uh, uh, most of them uh, have uh, clear roadmap to support the key feature of 4.5G. Okay, uh, last but not least, I will discuss the uh, uh, spectrum. Because spectrum is always most important resource for MDB, especially for 4.5G and 5G. As an analysis of uh, MT2020, which is an important 5G organization, uh, it finds that almost uh, uh, nearly uh, two, 2 gigahertz spectrum will be required uh, for 5G in the future. So it's uh, more than double. So it seems we have a lot of work to do in the, uh, in the next couple of years to, this, uh, to analyze what kinds of spectrum uh, will be suitable and will be available for 5G. And uh, I hope the, uh, we hope the whole industry can work together to speed up the release of this new spectrum, uh, since a lot of the huge new spectrum will be released in the future. And at the same time, we uh, hope the whole industry can work together to find a way to uh, try to lower the cost of the uh, purchase the spectrum, uh, since uh, so, so many uh, spectra will be released, and they, uh, which is relatively uh, higher in, in Europe, frankly speaking, uh, compared with many other regions. So in this way, we can help operators uh, pay more attention to the network deployment and the network operation to deliver the best uh, network and the, uh, the best user experience to the end user. 
And here is uh, all the spectrum can be used for 4.5G in the near future. I will take a few minutes on this page to share from this point of view of the spectrum. And we can see in the, uh, the grid, uh, grid blocks is uh, widely used spectrum uh, for 2G, 3G, 4G. Except this spectrum, we can see some partially used spectrum uh, uh, with, uh, with the grid block, including the 450, which is the golden spectrum for M to M and the Internet of Things uh, with the best coverage. Actually, Huawei already uh, launched the industry first the ALT 450 uh, in, in Finland last year. And also we can see that 2.6, this is a, a, which is a good spectrum for the future capacity. And above all, we can see many rarely uh, used spectrum, including the 700. The 700 is the less golden spectrum for MBB which is also uh, widely used in US, in many Asian countries. And since uh, 700 can provide the best network coverage and the best user experience, so uh, we hope we can speed up the release of 700. And the next we can see a special spectrum is 1.9, it's band, band 39, uh, which is from 1880 to 1920s, totally 40 megahertz. This spectrum is also widely used in China Mobile as the most important TDDLT band and uh, with, uh, with over 1 million base stations supporting this spectrum and uh, all the smartphones in China Mobile including iPhone support this spectrum but in many countries, especially in Europe, this spectrum was allocated, uh, allocated as 5 MHz each block to each operator so it cannot be used so I think it's, uh, maybe it's that time to, uh, we should think about how to withdraw and uh, reallocate this spectrum because spectrum is always the most important resource. It shouldn't be with it like this. So we should maximize the uh, economical and the social benefit of the spectrum. And the next spectrum is, we can say, it's, uh, 2.3, uh, which is also uh, widely used in many countries as a primary spectrum of TGLT. Uh, because totally there are 100, 100 megahertz bandwidth for 2.3. So this is, I think this is a wonderful spectrum for the future capacity. And the last we can say a new spectrum for 3.5 and 3.7 is totally 4, 4, 400 uh, megahertz bandwidth. It's the most wide spectrum. So this spectrum for uh, Japan uh, already released this spectrum last year for the three operators, uh, Docomo and the KDDI and the SoftBank. And the Huawei will help SoftBank to deliver the commercial network of this spectrum this year uh, to match the, the huge capacity in uh, dense urban area. And the SoftBank plan to provide many kinds of devices in this spectrum, including smartphone. So I think the end-to-end -end ecosystem uh, for this spectrum is already matured. It's time to think about how to use this spectrum. Okay, because today time is uh, not enough, uh, so uh, for the further discuss of uh, the spectrum, if you have only the comments, you, you can inform our local office. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's all we discuss uh, uh, today for this topic, and including Huawei's view of five G and what uh, is four point five G and how to find four point five G. And for the spectrum, we hope we can speed up the release and try to lower the cost. And then, uh, quite clear to you uh, that there will be an enormous opportunity for the telecom industry in the future. And with the technical innovation, especially the innovation of 4.5G and 5G, will uh, bring us a new round of revolution and a new round of opportunity. And the, uh, the door to the future digital versions has just opened up. We are, and we are just at the beginning of the beginning. So thank you.